Christian Bible School answer is good morning, Brother Stan. So, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Brother Stan. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> that makes me feel good. All right, we're so glad that you're here. God bless you. We're going to sing an old hymn. We want you to sing with us. If you want to, you can sing. You don't have to, but let's sing together, all right? stand up here and we'll, we'll be out there listening. God bless you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your mercy, your grace, your love. Lord, we thank you for each person that's here today. God, just bless them. Father, we thank you for all of our members, the visitors who are here, families who are here. God, you just bless them in a special way. It's good to be in your house. Father, we just ask that you would speak to us through the songs we sing, through the words that we hear, and Father, that your will would be done in our lives. God, I, we thank you for these who come this morning to be baptized, and we just we thank you for their obedience. We thank you for their the picture that they're going to show the whole world. And Father, we just we're so proud of proud of these young people. God, just bless them and bless their families. Lord, we love you. We give you all praise, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. you may be seated. We're going to kind of forego the announcements till the end. We're going to do things just a little different today because we want to focus on the baptism uh, at the end of the service today. And uh, I want you to, if you have your Bible, I want you to turn with me in the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms to the 23rd Psalm. We had a discussion about, do you say Psalms 23 or do you say Psalm 23? So we're going to turn to the book of Psalms, to the 23rd Psalm. Uh, I know that that's a very familiar passage to you. I know that you've heard that uh, many times. But today, God just seemed to impress upon me the need for us to talk about uh, all the good things that God does for us. You know, a lot of time when the preacher stands up, uh, we, uh, we talk about what, what we should not do. And there's a time for that. There's a time to talk about sin. And we talk about, you know, the, the responsibilities we have as Christians and, and uh, some of the decisions that God wants us to make. But today, I just want us to think about how great a God we have and how much he loves us. In fact, I believe that that's why David wrote this song, because it just, it just came out, it just welled up within him, and it came out. This song came out about how great God is. Uh, he, it's interesting that he sets it forth uh, as a shepherd and sheep. And that's what he's talking about. 
And I know you've, I know you've heard this, this uh, many times, but I want to read it to you. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Isn't that a great song? Isn't that a great song? One that we've heard many, many times. But I want us to think about it. I want us to break it down a little bit this morning. And I want us to think about it maybe in a little different way. First of all, he says, the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, uh, David knew what it meant to be a shepherd. He was a shepherd boy. He was a shepherd man. He took care of sheep. He knew what, he knew what that meant. And, uh, and Jesus also knew what that meant. And the readers of the Bible knew what that meant. And I, I think we don't, we don't fully comprehend it. it. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. The, Jesus said that the good shepherd is willing to lay down his life for his sheep. He was talking about himself. You know, the shepherd would put the, the sheep in the fold at night. Uh, to try to protect them from, from the enemies. And the fold only had one way in and one way out. It only had one gate. One way in and one way out. And the shepherd would lie down across that entrance, across that area where you go in and out, to make sure that, that the sheep were taken care of. And whenever an enemy came, whenever a wild animal came, the shepherd was willing to stand up and to defend and to fight for the sheep and to be willing uh, to fight all the way to, the, to death if it came to that. My friends, it did come to that. Jesus died on the cross for our sin. He willingly gave his life. The Bible said he could have called 10,000 angels, but he didn't do it. He laid down on that cross and allowed them to drive those nails in his hand. He hung on the cross. And he died on the cross for all of us. That's the kind of God we have. That's the kind of shepherd we have. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. He went on to say, I shall not want. You know, uh, God, I believe that that tells us that God takes care of us. And if you'll think about it for a little while, you'll realize that God does take care of us. We might not always recognize it. We may not always uh, give him the thanks that we should, but he's right there to take care of us. He, uh, he watches over our, our every need. We have no one. I believe one of the things that um, he does is that, you know, he gives us our, our basic needs, he, like, like air and water and house and all those kinds of things. But then, but then he gives us those, those extras, you know. He gives us family. And I see so many family here today. What a, what a joy. What a great privilege to be able to stand before you and, and just, just to be able to, to see your support and your love uh, within the family. God gives us family. And, 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 you know, sometimes I think we take that for granted. We need to realize the great wonder and blessing of family just the basic things and then it and then he uh, he takes care of all the uh, the other extras God takes care of us all of us I think have probably come close to death at one time or another I mean it may have been that you were in a car accident and God brought you through that uh, it may have been that you were close to another vehicle that had an accident. And you, you just think, you know, if I'd have been one second earlier, that could have been me. That could have been me to have that, that terrible accident. We've, we've probably seen people who have suffered uh, with diseases and 
uh, sickness and all kinds of stuff like that. And we, we think, you know, well, that, that could very easily have been me, but God took care of me. And even when we do get sick, God takes care of us. He is our shepherd. The scripture goes on to say, he, uh, he leadeth me to lie down in green pastures in green pastures of course it's talking about the sheep you know and how they how they uh, need to be led to green pastures so they can eat and so they can be full and uh, you know when does a when does a sheep when do sheep lie down in those green pastures they lie down when they're satisfied when their little tummies are full and uh, you know God is enough for us to satisfy us that's what I want you to see God is enough to satisfy us to satisfy our you know just basic needs but all the other needs that we have those mental needs those relationship needs those financial needs that we might have in our life God is enough Amen. so that we can just lie down and, and rest in green pastures he gives them to us all the time he blesses us all the time. He leads me beside still waters. Did you know that sheep will not drink from running water, rushing water? They will not drink from rushing water. So they have to be led to some place where the water is still and deep and runs real slow before they'll even approach the, the river or stream and, and get a drink. They will not drink from, from the rushing water. So God... The shepherd knows exactly what we need. Have you ever thought about that? He knows exactly what we need. Uh, Brother Stan may not know. Sometimes even our spouses don't really know. But God knows. He knows your heart. He knows everything. He knows everything about you. He uh he, he knew what the, the sheep needed. They needed that calm water so they could, so they could uh, meet the thirst that was in, in their life. And friends, I'm seeing in our world today that more and more people are having a thirst for the things of God. Have y'all noticed that? I, I think if you look around, you'll notice that's true. I, I know there's a lot of bad stuff going on in our world. I know that we could talk about that and, and uh, later I'll, I'll be able to, I would be glad to talk to you. But today I want us to, to realize that even though that all this bad stuff is going, going on, I see within our nation, within our state, within our town, within this church, a lot of people who are hungry for the things of God. They want to hear the word of God. And they want to come to Bible studies. They want to come to church. They want to be a part of what God is doing because they, they feel and they know that he knows exactly what we need. Amen. The Bible said he restores our souls. He restores our soul. You know, there's something in this world that's rampant, and it's called sin. Sin is rampant. In fact, the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's what it says. All of us are sinners. And we can sit there and say, well, Brother Stan, I know you're a sinner, but I don't know about me. But I want to tell you, I know that you're a sinner too. Not because I know your life that well. Well, some of you, I do know your life pretty well. <laughs> but it's not because of that. It's because that's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. None of us can measure up good enough in our life, sinless enough to stand before God and say, I deserve to go to heaven because I have done everything that I can possibly do, and I am the best person you'll ever meet, and so I deserve to go to heaven. None of us. None of us can say that. It's only by... God's grace and mercy and uh, our faith in Him. That's the only way that we can stand before Him. He restores our soul. In other words, sin came into the world and God provided a way for our soul to be restored 
to be forgiven, to be saved. And that's through Jesus Christ. He restoreth our soul. You know, there is that spiritual thirst. And it can only be satisfied by a, a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the only way it can be satisfied is, is a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It even goes on to say, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I had a funeral yesterday. You know, it seems that it seems that uh, there are a lot of funerals, and have, have you ever noticed? Have you ever noticed that when one, when there's one funeral, there's usually at least a couple more. They kind of run in threes. Sometimes more than three, but it, they kind of run in threes. And so when I when I have a funeral, it's like, oh no, you know, who's who's going to be next? And we don't know, do we? We had some lady that uh, lost control of her car and herself. She didn't know what was going on. We don't know exactly what happened. The car rolled on the side of the uh, lighthouse, on the far side of the lighthouse, went down there near those, those bales, those big uh, hay bales, and the, the lady passed away. We don't know when that's going to happen for any of us, do we? I mean, nobody was here. She did, it just happened and that there was her car down there. Uh, it was during the week and during the day. And we, know, we don't know when that's going to happen. So I, I want you to, to realize that we need to be ready. We need to be ready. The Bible says it is appointed and a man wants to die and then the judgment. So all of us are going to die sometime. We don't know when that's going to be. Unless Jesus comes again, all of us are going to die. And we and, and people around us, I, we don't like to think about it. We don't, we don't want to focus on that. But it's a fact. And all of us have to walk through that valley of the shadow of death. Either um, our family or somebody we know or somebody we love. It happens all the time. It happens all the time. I don't know about you, but I've noticed uh, that uh, there are many who are passing away who are younger and younger, like, you know, 50 years old. Now, I know some of you guys are saying, well, man, that's really old. But that's not old. That's young. <laughs> now that I'm where I am, that's young. And uh, it's so sad. And we have to pass through that shadow sometimes. But he says that I won't fear. We don't have to fear. If we know Christ as our Lord and Savior, we don't have to fear. Paul said, for me to live is Christ, but for me to die is gain. And, you know, he, he knew. And, and, and he wrote that. Uh, uh, it wasn't very long after he wrote that that he uh, died. But... He said, for me to live is Christ, but, but when I die, if I'm a Christian, if I know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, it's going to be gain. It's going to be wonderful. There's a scripture in Revelation that says, and I heard a voice from heaven say, right, blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow after them. That's Revelation 14, 13, and it says, blessed or happy are those who die in the Lord. That's crazy, isn't it? You know, we think of death as, as the ultimate end. But as a Christian, uh, you know, we think of that as the worst thing that could possibly happen. And it is bad. It is horrible. It's, it's hard to go through those times. But listen, the Bible says we don't need to fear. We don't need to fear. And he even says, he even says that your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now, what, what was the rod used for? To snag that sheep out of uh, out of danger. What was the rod used for? Uh, many times the other end of the staff. What was the rod used for? It was to beat off enemies and to keep people back. And that's what the shepherd does for us. He fights that enemy off of us. You know, sometimes we try to be the warrior. And we try 
to be the one that does the battle. But we need to realize that the Bible says that the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. And we need to let him fight our battles. And guess what? He'll do a whole lot better than we do. He'll do a whole lot better than we do. He goes on and says that he prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. He sympathizes with us. You know, sometimes we just wish that certain people who come against us in various ways, certain people that don't understand our life and don't even try, certain people that hurt our feelings, hurt our children's feelings, who are just mean. I call them mean people. There's just people that that uh, we don't get along with. And God says that I'm going to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy. In other words, what he's saying is I'm going to satisfy you right in front of everybody. Right in front of those that might want to come against you. Right in front of those that don't like you. Right in front of your, quote, enemies. We we, we might say, well, I don't really have any enemies. I don't really hate anyone, anything like that. But there are those that need to see that God's working in your life and that it's God that's done uh, all the good things in your life. He sympathizes with us. He sympathizes with us. And we, we might like to take a, you know, a club to him or something. But God says, no, I'm going to bless you right in front of them so they will know that you are mine and that will be better than any clubbing that you might want to do. I say that joking. But you know what I mean. He sympathizes with us. It says, Thou anointest my head with oil. Thou anointest my head with oil. You know what the oil is, represents in the Bible? The oil represents the Holy Spirit. And he said, Thou anointest my head with oil. Sometimes in Scripture they would anoint. And they would anoint them starting with the head, of course, with the top, implicating that the oil would run down all the way to our feet. The Holy Spirit, he said, Thou anointest my head with oil. He sympathizes with us and he, he soothes us. Oil is also used for healing. And, uh, and many times you would put, put the oil upon yourself for healing. And he, he, it, it, he's saying, Thou anointest my head with oil. You soothe me. And all the hurts that I'm feeling and all the things that's going on in my life and all the questions that I might have about what's going on and what the future holds, you soothe me. And then he says, my cup overflows. He sympathizes, he soothes, and he satisfies to overflowing. To overflowing. My cup overflows. And you know what? What a beautiful what a beautiful picture. You know, we might hold our cup out for somebody to give us some coffee, or we might uh, ask for a, a drink of water, and uh, and we might we might get that. You know, we might go to a restaurant and say, you know, I want another Dr Pepper, and they'll go fill it up for you and put a little ice in it, and they'll bring it back to you. But what God does is that He takes our cup, us, us as his sheep, and he pours into us, not, not just to fill us up, not just to satisfy for a little while, but he, he satisfies us until it's overflowing. And it overflows to other people. That's what Christianity is, our, our blessing. God blesses us so that we will be a blessing to others. It overflows to other people. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. You may say, Brother Stan, you don't know what I'm going through. And I don't. But God does. And I know this. 
I know this, that God is the answer. And I know this, that if, uh, if we are his, he will never forsake us or leave us. I know this, that God loves you. God loves you so much that he sent his son. And he provided you a way to have salvation. I know this, that God will never leave you. And, and he's right there by your side. I know this, that he's as close as a prayer. I know this, that he's brought others through all kinds of things. And he can bring you through whatever you're going through. And uh, it's right. I don't know what it is. And sometimes it hurts so badly. But we need to realize that he says that he will, sure, that surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. You know, if we would not focus on the bad, and today, this morning, for a little while, just think of all the blessings that God has given us that God is giving us right now. And we'll, we'll be able to say, surely goodness and mercy has followed me all the days of my life. And then he goes on to say, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God blesses us here, but he also has a plan for us to have eternal life. And he, he wants us to be with him forever and ever and ever. You know, our world puts a lot of emphasis upon uh, people who are famous, you know. Uh, they, they have programs about the rich and famous and, and the, their houses and stuff like that. They, they have programs about people who uh, are, are in the music industry and what kind of house they have, what kind of apartment they have, what kind of cars they drive and all of that. Uh, celebrity celebrity means so much in our world today and people think oh I want to be like him oh if I could uh, look like her oh if I had what he has or she has oh if I could just be uh, you know live in that house and be there and I want to tell you something the greatest celebrity of all Jesus wants you to spend eternity with him. He wants you to be a part of his family. He wants you to, to, uh, to walk with him. He wants to give you a mansion. He wants to give you heaven where there'll be no more sorrow, there'll be no more pain, there'll be no more darkness. We won't have to worry about all that stuff. He wants you to experience those streets of gold. He has a mansion prepared for you. And if he's done that, he's going to come again and receive you unto himself. That where he is, there you may be also. And we're blessed in this life. And he offers us blessing after this life. And my friends, it's only through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I kind of quoted a little bit of John 14, but... At the end of, uh, I mean, in that passage in John 14, Thomas said, we don't know where you're going and we don't know how to get there. And so this is what Jesus said to you, to me, to them, to all of us, to all the world. This is what he said. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Only through Jesus. Only through Jesus. Jesus, can we have eternal life? Well, God bless you. I know this is a little different to have the sermon first. And usually after the sermon, you get to go eat your roast. But we're going to go on with our service and have a little music. Uh, we're going to have our children, if our children would come, after a word of prayer, if our children would come to well, Children's Church, and then we'll take an offering, and then we'll, we'll have a little praise music. So, Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for everyone who's here. Again, we say thank you. And God, you just take control of this service. We give it to you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, kiddos, y'all come on.
Let me get Miss Leanne a little room there. All right, let's pray before we take our offering, and then we'll, we'll turn it over to Miss Leanne. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to give our tithes and offerings to you. We ask, Lord, that you would take that which is given, use it in your kingdom's work here in this, this uh, church and in our state and, and, Lord, even all over the world. God, we, we thank you for those who are cheerful givers, who give from their heart. And, God, we know that uh, you're going to take care of every need that we might have as we try to serve you. God, we love you. We give you all praise. Thank you for these young people who are up here at the altar. God, just bless them and, and bless Miss Leanne as she teaches them. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Okay. Um, so I'm going to divert a little bit because Brother Stan just read the 23rd Psalm and we can also use this in this lesson. We're going to use also this. Um, the 23rd Psalm uh, verse 4 it says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Do y'all ever get scared? Like maybe first day back to school or yeah, or maybe you got a test you're not really prepared for. Yeah. Do you know that God's walking with you even though you're scared and that he doesn't want you to be scared because he's going to go with you and do the things that make us scared? Did you know that? So, okay. So he said, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So he's telling you, I'm going to be there with you and comfort you. Um, we talked about a really nice, neat man this morning in Sunday school called Elijah. And he went to tell King Ahab that he was doing wrong. And the Lord sent a three-year drought to prove to Ahab's kingdom that he was the real God and not the fake gods that they were worshiping. And you know what? This... Elijah was a really brave man, and he was not scared because God was telling him what to do. And so we need to remember when we get scared, we just need to pray to God and ask him to walk with us because he doesn't want us to be afraid. Okay? The other scriptures that we're going to read. Whoa. Gee, let me have my notes back. Is Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 31, 6. Did you find it, Cannon? Sorry, 31.6. And then also uh, 2 Timothy. So God's word is telling us that he does not want us to be scared because the spirit of fear is not from, from our Heavenly Father. Um, he, and he says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, he says, For God did not give us a spirit of fear or timidity or cowardice. That means being a coward. Have you ever heard of that when you're scared to do something? Or cowardice or fear. But he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of sound judgment and self-discipline and self-control. And so those are the things that we have through the Lord. What? The Holy Spirit gives us that. That's right. God sends us his Holy Spirit to walk with us every day. Also in uh, Deuteronomy 31, are you there? In verse 6, God tells us what? Can you read it? Yes. Yeah. Be strong and for God, for good courage, your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Good. And so this version that I have says, be strong and courageous in the Lord. Do not be afraid or tremble at them. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you. And he will not fail you or forsake you. So that tells us that God is always with us in every circumstance. And that means when we have hard things to do, that we don't need to be scared of it and move away from it. We need to go towards it and do the hard things. Because that's what makes us grow as people, is doing the hard things. Okay. Um, the message version of Psalm 56.3 is really good too. It says, when I am really afraid... I come to you in trust, and uh, I am proud to praise God, for he makes me fearless now. 
That's, and that's the message version. So, don't be scared. God's always with you. And when you get scared, you just pray and say, Dear Lord, please walk with me through this and help me to not have fear and give me courage. Okay? Because our God gives us courage and good judgment. Alrighty? Okay, good. Okay, who's going to pray? You always have to pray. Can you, you going to pray us out today? Okay. All right, let me say a quick prayer, and then you're going to do it, okay? All right. Dear Lord, thank you so much for these children that are up here, Lord. I just ask that you cover them and help them not to be afraid and help them to know that you are with them and walking with them, Lord, and just give them good judgment and give them peace about situations and just always remind them that you're there with them and just walk through the schools and in every situation that you're that they are in. Thank you for your son, Jesus, and it's in his name I pray. And, okay, T is going to pray for us. Through it, sorry, through it. Thank you, God, for accepting me and we hope you just walk with us and we don't be scared. And we hope we give us good food and we hope we heal the people that go to the hospital. Thank you, God. Amen. scripture reading this morning our scripture reading will be out of Colossians chapter 4 will be 2 through 6 you want to read it <laughs> alright Colossians 4 chapter 2 Chapter 4, 2 through 6. Devote yourself to prayer, being watchful and thankful, and pray for us too that God may open a door for our message, so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. Pray that I am proclaim, proclaim it clearly as I should. Be wise in the ways you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your convict conversation be always full of grace seasoned with salt so that you may know how to answer everyone dear heavenly father thank you for this wonderful day lord thank you for all these many blessings lord and just thank you for giving us a good scripture lord in jesus name i pray amen amen, amen. amen. also uh Life group, it's from six to seven, and for couples raising kids, we talk about scripture. Um, also, we'll have somebody to watch kids. If you have kids, you can bring them as well. So, yeah. well, this song's kind of peeping, got a lot of words. We want you to sing it with us. So the Bible says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. So God says that if we give, He's going to give up. Thank you. 
better than you, God. And I want you to, to realize that from the scriptures we've had today, from what God has already spoke to us about, shown us, I want you to just really sing out, there's nothing that compares to God. I search the world. Turn bones into armies. 
if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then you will hear from heaven. You will forgive our sins and you will hear our land, heal our land. I cry out to you, O oh God, as your daughter. I'm asking you to heal our land. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If our candidates will come on and we'll get ready. Uh, we're so glad that you're here. Uh, in just a few moments we'll be ready and uh, we hope that you can stay and uh, just, just be in prayer, okay?
In Acts 8, it says, But an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south, into the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza. The same is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was over all her treasure, who had come to Jerusalem to worship. And he was returning and sitting in his chariot and was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the Spirit saith unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, Understandest what thou readest? And he said, How can I except someone shall guide thee? And he besought Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of scripture which he was reading was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb before his shearer is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. His generation, who shall declare it? For his life is taken from the earth. And Enoch said to Philip, I pray thee, of whom is he speaking? The prophet? Uh, who is he speaking of? Himself or some other? And Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with this scripture, preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on the way, they came into a certain water. And the eunuch said, Behold, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And he said, If you believe with all your heart, then you can be baptized. And they, when they, uh, and he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they both went down <coughs> into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. And the eunuch saw him no more, for he went on he went on his way rejoicing. What a beautiful story of baptism, of understanding what God's word says, and then believing in the one that is talking about Jesus, and then after that to be baptized. We have three young people today who come, and uh, we're so proud of them. I see a lot of family that's here for uh, the littles and for the Ritters. And uh, they, they kind of took up people's space on this side. So look, some of y'all had to move on this side. But I love that. I love that. If, if you're here, I know you may be here all the time, but if you're here celebrating this baptism, uh, if you would please stand. We want to just recognize all of you. All the families, all the visitors who are here. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Y'all give me a hand.
want you to see her. Get over here. So. <laughs> All right. Do you trust that Jesus is your Lord and Savior? All right. By that faith in Him, I now baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. that they set for all of us as adults. It's just uh, it, it's a glorious thing. So uh, we're going to be presenting them with the Bible uh, later, but uh, we're going to go ahead and dismiss. And we sure thank you for being here today. God, we love you. We give you honor and praise. We give you thanks for the wonderful blessings. Uh, we just ask, Lord, that you would bless these young people as they uh, continue on their journey of being the young Christians, the young Christian ladies, and eventually the young Christian women that you want them to be. God, just bless them as they walk. Keep them safe. Keep them close to you. And Lord, we'll just give you all praise, and we pray this in Jesus' name. And we'll remind you about Wednesday night. It starts at uh, 6. Uh, also, uh, the life class that starts at 6 today, starts at 6, uh, deacon study at 5 o'clock today, so deacon study at 5 o'clock. We need an extra teacher on Wednesday night. Yes, we do need another teacher on Wednesday night, if God has been talking to you, and he does that sometimes, if he's been talking to you, we need a teacher for what, the second, second grade, the first and second grade? We got one. So... We got one. We got one. We got one. Next Sunday. Oh yes, next Sunday. Yes, thank you for reminding. Next Sunday we're going to have a covered dish meal. We want you to bring a covered dish. Stay with us. We're going to have a note burning for getting the building paid off over here, and then fellowship together. So please, please, please come next Sunday. It will be a special day. Okay. God bless you. Steve, can I just invite all the ladies to yes. try to do Bible study tomorrow night over in the light, over in the lighthouse at six? Um, it's going to be on Genesis. There's a book, but if you don't have it, you can still get it. Everyone's welcome, and I believe. Yes, I believe Tommy the told me. Starting that. tomorrow night also. Yeah, Tommy uh, Smith asked me to announce that the, uh, there's going to be a men's Bible study. Uh, or was meeting, I think, at the Luces and uh, different places, but. It, Anyway, they're going to be meeting at our church on uh, Monday night at 6.30. So, guys, if you want to come to the Bible study, Monday night at 6.30 over here in the Old Fellowship Hall. A lot going on. A lot going on. All right. Did we pray? So <laughs> much going on. I, I, I Let, let's all stand. We'll have a word of prayer. Brother Dennis, uh, Watson, would you please dismiss us? Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the blessings that you give us, Lord. We're thankful for the way that you're working in our in our church family, Lord. And just, uh, Lord, I'm so thankful that uh, for all these uh, salvations, Lord, that, uh, that I'll be able to share heaven with all of these people, Lord. And just, uh, just, just show us the opportunity that we have to serve others, and, and Lord, just draw us closer to you in Christ's name. We pray. Amen.